Hello everyone. I woke up this morning with a major epiphany. Uh, apparently I've been missing a piece of my puzzle, but I know I kind of look sometimes like I'm missing more than one piece of my puzzle. But <laughs> Other than that, I got all my pieces. Um, so anyway, a realization about an aspect of myself that um, I had not realized up until now, but I've always intuited that there is something that I'm not quite certain how to define or how to put my finger on it. And I'm a very contemplative person, self-reflective person, and I strongly suggest that to others. It's how you find your way around your own bullshit, basically. So um, I wake up this morning with these thoughts and I realize it's a huge moment for me. And that inspired me to do this video. Um, making the point that the people in your life are going to show you who you are if you're paying attention. And um, it reminded me of something I learned from Tony Robbins and he learned from Jim Rohn and Jim Rohn probably learned it from, learned it from my grandmother or his grandmother says that um, we are the average of the five people we hang out with the most. Um, so, I worked with that for a while, a um, few years back, and the landscape of my friendships changed when I evaluated the people that I spend the most time with in my life and how that, what does that, what does that say about me and where's that going, things changed. So this morning, another hit from that department, you would say. I started thinking about this and how the people in my life, throughout my life, it's always someone that has pointed to and helped me realize an aspect of myself that is essentially super important. So you can call this like a gratitude video, perhaps, for example, um, my friend Matt, I met 24 years ago, who helped me become comfortable with my adventurous side. Um, that was huge because I grew up in a very restrictive society and I didn't know what adventure meant. Um, what, what does it feel like? And when I felt it within myself, I didn't know what to do with the feelings. It's like, what the hell? Is something wrong with me? Like, why don't I want to stay in one place and do one thing? So he was the one that sort of accepted me for that weirdness and showed me through his life and his actions what that looks like. And it's okay to be that way. Um, people coming and going just pulling things out of me and helping me discover them. And then I work with them and evolve them, accept them. And I am today who I am because of all these interactions with key people in my life at key points in my life. My friend Joanne, um, she fished me out from the streets practically. And because of her and her husband, I began to understand or to see what a good relationship looks like between people. And I also felt and understood the value of someone caring about you unconditionally. That's what they gave me. I understood and I saw an example of how important it is when you see something valuable in another person to nourish it and help them develop it. Not to enable them, but to empower them and help them learn to believe in themselves. And that was huge. And that was a person. The person, Joanne, that helped me find this within myself. And I've never been the same. It, of course, took me years to fully develop this. But without her nudging me along, I probably would have never gotten where I am. Other people in my life, my friend Alex, who discovered me as a creative person and he's always been a mentor and a very nurturing presence for my creative side. He saw the writer in me. He encouraged it. Um, we have very deep conversations when we get together about all kinds of things. He, you know, he, he's comfortable 
in the ambiguous space of thought and contemplation. And through the experience of being with him around in those moments, I became comfortable that way too. So things stop shutting down anymore. It's like when I think about things, I flow with them. He's also a great interviewer. So he gets things out of people that other people can't get out of people. It's amazing, which is why he's won a Pulitzer Prize in journalism, right? But okay, maybe that's what makes me a good coach too, is because from him, I have learned the value of connecting to another human being and asking questions that open them up. Um, so anyway, I sometimes think when I'm with the clients and <laughs> I'm a little stuck and I really know where things are going, I go, what would Alex ask? Like, if he was here, what kind of question would he ask of this person to get to the depth of things? And that's helped me tremendously. But I'm also asking those same questions of myself. I have learned to interview myself, to discover things about myself. So that has been a huge influence in my life. Um, so people come and people bring things to you. They pull things out of you. My present partner, Jeff, he's showed me what patience looks like and what loving a person more than you love yourself looks like. And he's also evolved a very fun part of my personality. It's like before I met him, I was a shy, in the closet dancer. I would only dance when nobody's in the house and I turn up the music and I just go crazy all by myself. But out in public, I'm all like reserved and I clumsy. I think of myself as inadequate and all that stuff. And so when I met him, he's my dancing partner and he's very encouraging and he looks up to me like I'm a better dancer than he is. And I think that's the funniest part. But at the end of the day, if he wasn't this supportive, if he was jealous, if he was controlling about that aspect of me, I would have never become the force on the dance floor that I've become. And when I step on that dance floor, I'm like quite aware of the effect I have on the dance floor. So I'm having a lot of fun. Other people are having a lot of fun. I am the dancer I am today because he's helped me nourish that aspect of myself. Then I became a pole dancer. And I talk to girls, I'm on forums with pole dancers, and a lot of times girls say that their partners do not approve of this activity. They think it's dirty, they don't want their friends to see what their partners are doing on a freaking pole, that kind of thing. Jeff shares my videos, he goes, check this out, he's proud of myself. So here's me in my underwear practically dancing on the pole, and he's like, yeah, good job! So I would have never become even remotely as inspired by pole dancing if it wasn't by his encouraging attitude. So, you know, I, some, not too long ago, a couple of years ago, maybe three years ago, I bumped into a, a, a guy who became, we became buddies and he mesmerized me with the way he interacted with strangers. I'm a very reclusive person. I have a cave here in the house and when I'm in there and the door is locked, and if you try to get in or interrupt me for any other reason, no matter what I'm doing in there, you run the risk of getting dismembered within seconds. I mean, I'm like protective of my space. I shut down, I close down, I hunker down. It's like, get out of my space. And when I'm out there in the world, that's pretty much my attitude. It's like, mind your own beeswax. I'm doing my own thing. You do your own thing. And I just go around on a mission, doing my errands, blah, blah, blah. Whatever the hell I'm doing, don't bother me. If I don't know you, I have no reason to talk to you, stay away from me. So then I bump into my buddy Mark and he, it's like he can't go half a mile in less than a fucking hour because the guy talks to whoever shows up and he like finds things to talk about to strangers that, and I'm like, okay, come on, let's go. Let's, you know, let's get going to where we're going. And he's like, hey, how's it going? He opens up and then like, hanging out with him for a while. I started thinking, what's it about this guy? Like, why is he doing all this? But then I also noticed that whenever I'm with him and he initiates interactions like this with other people, I'm actually enjoying myself. I'm like, oh my God, this is so cool. So after a while, I finally got it through my head that, hey, that's a better way to go through your day than to like hunker down and just focus and walk down this one path. So pretty soon, 
I found out that I actually, within myself, want to be that way. And somehow I'm like blocking it. It's like, what the hell's wrong with me? So pretty soon I was out there and having a good time with strangers, having conversations, just totally at ease. And my level of joy just went through the roof. All because this one person showed me how they do it by how they really are. He doesn't know. I'm like, what I'm saying right now, probably a surprise to him how much of an influence that was on me. But he is who he is. And by being in that presence, and I'm a reflective, self-reflective person, I could see the difference. And I go, what the hell? You know, this is a, a nicer, joyful way to be versus the way I am. And why, why am I that way anyway? So things change. And now I show up. I do presentations in front of a whole bunch of people like I just did a couple of days ago or yesterday. And it's just like lights up the room and everybody's interacting and it's all kinds of fun for everybody, not just me. So things we bring off of each other, my ex-husband, I cannot, like I usually, you know, it's like everybody's like, oh, your ex, you really want to talk about that? I'm like, yeah, I mean, I have never seen a person more driven, more ambitious and more disciplined in my whole life. And I mean, that guy takes the cake. He is just like a dog on a bone. And from him, I learned to be a go-getter. It's like you don't live with the go-getter and I become a go-getter. It's crazy. It's like, and I always thought that, you know, I'm an overachiever or whatever until I got married to him and I lived with him. And then I started feeling like a flake because compared to him, I mean, I wasn't even on the scale of things. So he really like mobilized me in a way. He inspired me. He showed me again, not he's trying, he's not trying to teach me. He's just how he is. And this is how his life is. And I can see through his actions, the value of his actions, the outcomes of his actions. And I'm inspired. So of course I won't sponge it up. So he brought that part of me out too. It's like, I wasn't trying to adopt an attitude. I already had this within me. I was just like a little more distracted and I was a little more uncoherent about things and undecisive about things. And when I saw how he is, I just really focused. I mean, it was just like, whoa, focus. And then I found that drive within myself just by being in his presence again. So huge influence. Um, and then lately, you know, last couple of months, I've been mowing over some other ideas. What I was referring to the last piece in my puzzle here, I bumped into Anthony, another person that just pops into my life. Um, pretty much like everybody else, I never looked for any of these people. We just kind of gravitate in space and find each other, I suppose. Um, but, you know, I bumped into this person and he opened up another concept to me, which all of a sudden I started reflecting upon how what he was talking about and referring to actually has been my experience in my whole life, but it, it's, uh, it, it's been an un, not understood um, aspect of myself. So it's caused my relationships usually to progress in a certain way, like almost like a pattern. And I always thought, oh, I just need to learn a little more and I need to be better at this and I need to be better at that and my relationships will be better. So I've been with Jeff for seven years now. And it's a different relationship for sure. But I could feel myself falling in this pattern again. And I just like try to muscle out of it, whatnot. And then when this person, Anthony, showed up, all of a sudden I was like, oh, here's another perspective. I mean, it's like another light bulb went on. But it still took me two months to like figure things out. And let me tell you, this is not easy. It's like, what is going on? Why is it happening? And And like, what am I really thinking? It's like... Where is Where are things coming from? What is the friction? Like, what is trying to come out? And then this morning I wake up and I'm like, whoa, the light bulb goes on. And so, like, I feel like, oh my God, here's another uncalled for or asked for assistance. <laughs> it's like, and the funny thing is, it's like he probably doesn't know what I'm talking about either. It's just by who he is and how he is and me being in that presence that I self-reflect and take and learn lessons about myself and what's important to me um, and refining my own experiences and refining my own existence, my points of view, my priorities. And so I cannot under stress, like I just, 
you must understand that the quality of your life and the quality of your character is directly related to the people you hang out with. So with that, some years ago, 2013, I wrote this piece. It's called Peas in a Pod. Um, it was written in Indulge Slow, the magazine. It was about relationships and things, and I thought about it this morning, so I pulled it out, and I'll end this talk with this, quoting myself, essentially, from this article. It says, To have friends that in some way inspire your creativity, stimulate your self-expression, and support you in whatever way they can on your journey of life are the kinds of friends you should be surrounding yourself with. At the same time, you should consider being this kind of friend too, because you are also needed in realizing the dreams of others. Without your heartfelt participation, someone else's life will be flat. Without your honest self-expression, a piece of the mystery of the universe will have to be left unrealized. Without your willingness to rise above your fears and limitations, the only faith that awaits you is the well-worn-out spot on your couch. And then you die. So, burn big, burn bright. And in my case, I hope I die young. <laughs> Take care.